Have you ever been ghosted when online dating? Do you even know what it is? Well, tune in today for a discussion on how to become a savvy digital dater. Thanks so much for tuning back into Second Act TV. Real happy to have Sandy back with us today. Sandy, as you recall, is the dating coach for women after 40 and the founder of lastfirstdate.com. Sandy, I got it right this time. <laughs> Did, didn't I? <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us again. Pleasure to be here. Sandy, uh, the last time you were here, you know, we, we did a couple segments on how to get started online, uh, you know, jumping back in that dating pool and how to do your profile, et cetera, et cetera. Where I want to pick up on today is really what to expect once, you know, we've been out there or about to get out there. And one of that is a term that is new to me, and that's ghosting. What is ghosting? Ghosting is a fancy way of saying that a person disappears. And it's become such a prevalent issue that it's now the new free guide that I give out on my website. It's the top 10 reasons why men ghost or pull away or disappear. And um, yeah, so it could happen after you've been talking to a person online for a while, all of a sudden they're gone. Uh, it happens all the time. That's one of the most common ways of experiencing ghosting. Happened to me last night. I connected with a new guy on Bumble, which is one of my favorite apps, and we had a bunch of, of back and forths, and he was a gentleman when I asked him to get on the phone because I don't enjoy texting a man because it's not a good way to get to know somebody. And he said, sure, what's a good time for you? And then he told me that he would call me at 9.15 last night, and radio silence. <laughs> So um, for me, I, I, I'm just so used to it that it's like, come on, what happened to manners? But you just move on and, and you just start dating again online. It's, it's, uh, but it can happen at any stage. It can happen after eight months. It could happen, happen after three dates. Well, you bring up a good, good point. You know, what happened to manners? Why is this more, more prevalent? And we read another article I think that you had linked to that it's really this whole, these dating apps and this digital dating era that's provoking this sort of behavior. T talk about that. Yeah, I think that we're living in the online age and everybody's texting. I mean, my daughter will text me from across the house <laughs> instead of mom. <laughs> so we're so used to writing what we have to say. It's much easier. There's less confrontation. And I think people hide behind their computers a lot. I mean, you've, you've seen also people um, say nasty things to people on like YouTube videos because they're hiding behind their computer. It's okay to be a troll and say nasty things. So I think it's part of that whole era of permission to be a jerk <laughs> for, for, you know, a lack of better words to say. I think it's, it's not polite. Um, but for a lot of people, they don't know, it's not that they're jerks. They, they don't know what to say. And this actually came up once when I was in a uh, forum uh, on a panel talking to a group of singles. And one woman said, why does man say he's going to call me again and then never follow up? And she said, actually, the guy is in the audience. And if he wants to, it turned out he was there. <laughs> oh, wow. And he said, if he wants to answer, it's fine. But if he doesn't, I understand. And he got up. It was like awesome. So we got the answer in real time. And he said, I was brought up to be polite and kind. And I feel like if I say to you, you know, I don't want to see you again, it's mean. So women suffer from that, too. We have to be nice all the time. And the truth is, you're not being nice if you make a false promise. You're not being nice if you don't follow through and you don't tell someone that you don't feel it's a match. It's so easy just to say, you know, it's so nice to meet you. Most people are not going to be your match. That's not a shock. Yeah. But being left in the lurch feels really bad, especially when you're in a relationship and it's been long term. Come on, have the decency to to say, I, I just don't feel it and I'm sorry. I don't want to hurt you. And if you don't know how to do it, get some advice. You know, and you bring up a good point in one of your articles, Sandy, and that is, you know, one, 
we as women, maybe even more so than men, tend to get obsessed with knowing why we've been ghosted. Um, you know, and maybe at the onset, it's not quite as important. Certainly, if you've been in a relationship, you know, we do deserve an answer. How do we, how do we, when is it okay to ask or find out, you know, why we've been ghosted? And, and then how do you have that conversation? So you can always ask. Most people who ghost will not respond. Just to know that up front and, and be okay with no response. But it doesn't hurt to be assertive and just say, what happened? <laughs> like I could have said to the guy last night, I'm sorry, did I, did I, I'm confused. Um, was that, were, were you expecting me to call you? But I'm not going to do that because um, I'm a woman of value. And so I, I'm letting that one go. But if it's after a number of dates, when I first started dating after divorce, I've said to men, was it something I said, you know? <laughs> And just kind of put a smiley face or something, you know, and text them, you know. But if it's a long-term thing, then you have every right to say, listen, it's really hurtful that you just disappeared. And I would love to have a conversation. Women do need closure much more than men. And the, the closure is that the person's not into you. You know, that's, that's sort of what you have to take away, that either they're not into you or they don't have the guts to talk to you about this. And so do you really want to be with somebody who doesn't have the nerve or the kindness and the graciousness to end something in a, in a kind way. No, exactly. And, you know, I, I think the point probably of this segment is that one, you know, you, we're, we're going to have a lot of rejection uh, with online dating just by the nature of, of the beast, so to speak. And I think that knowing the difference between real rejection and what you call false rejection is, is really a, a critical point. And I want to pick up on that on our next segment. So if you'll stay over, we'll pick up on that and talk about, uh, you know, how to handle rejection. Was there anything else that you wanted to say about ghosting on this segment before we sign off? I just think you have to have a tough skin when you're dating. And, it, and remember that most things are not personal. You know, most things are a reflection of the other person, because if you're a person who would never ghost somebody, um, then then you're with the wrong person, number one. And number two, make sure that you're not ghosting if you don't want to be ghosted. So do unto others. It's the golden rule of ghosting. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Sandy. Thanks. OK, we'll see you on the next segment uh, and talk about how to handle rejection and not let it get or not have it knock you on the butt. I think you said ass, though. We won't. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hope you enjoyed today's segment with Sandy. You can get in touch with Sandy and schedule a Get Acquainted call by clicking the link in the video description below. And be sure to subscribe to our channel. Button's right here. See you next time.